Hey guys, Matt here from the Traveling Together Journal, bringing you another camper build video. Today we are going to try to build composite panels out of wood and pour foam. As you remember from our previous videos, we plan to construct our camper out of composite panels consisting of thin plywood, an interior wood frame, and XPS foam board coated in fiberglass and epoxy resin. But we hit a snag before we even got started. The XPS foam board is no longer available in my area or online, so I am exploring alternatives. The pour foam I am using is a two-part polyurethane flotation foam by Total Boat. For these tests, I am using the same 5mm plywood and 1x2 lumber that I had planned to use with the XPS foam, but I am leaving the ends open so I can pour the foam in one end and check to see if it made it all the way through the panel and expanded to fill the entire thing. In theory the pour foam should work well, but with a working time of only 15 seconds, I am concerned with my ability to mix the two parts and get it poured into the narrow void of the panel before it begins to expand. Eleven minutes later. Plastic bags, totally separated right off. All right, so it's had 15 minutes now, so it should be totally cured. The stuff that was like underneath the plastic didn't uh, cure as quickly, so gave it some more time after I pulled it apart. Yeah, the thinner part there is still pretty bendable, but this section up here where it just free flowed out and totally cured is very rigid which is a good sign for us. So I got a couple wood saws, a bi-metal blade for a sawzall, and then a razor knife. And I'm just gonna be trying out, poking at the foam, cutting it, doing different things. Try to get a better idea of what it's gonna be like to work with this stuff. Well, I'm satisfied with the results of our first test. The foam completely filled in the void and it was easily cut back with a wood or metal saw blade and it sanded just fine with 80 grit sandpaper. So I was able to clean it up, but obviously I don't wanna to have to use double the amount of product to fill the voids. So we're gonna move on to the next piece and try to actually mix the correct amount this time and see how that goes. Well, the only information I had about how much liquid product would be needed to produce a given amount of foam was that the two gallon kit was supposed to produce eight cubic feet of foam. And I clearly messed up the math when trying to figure out how many liquid ounces would be needed for a given number of cubic inches because I overdid it again. So I overfilled the last one by quite a bit, but on the plus side, it overflowed onto this piece of scrap wood that was laying around. So I got a little test to see what kind of adhesion we have to the plywood. So that stuck pretty good. Definitely took some force and you can see there's still bits of the foam left on the surface of the wood where it was touching. So the foam failed before the adhesion did. So, happy with that. All right, now I'm working on what will be the top of the wheel well. It's a much bigger panel. So this one I feel like is gonna be a really good test whether or not I can manage the pour foam and actually get it all down into the panel before it starts foaming. That's the thing that I'm most worried about. I guessed a good amount to pour in, so it expanded all the way up out the top a little bit. And the thing that I was worried about is it wouldn't get all the way to the bottom before it started to expand, but it totally did. And foam coming out the top. The tools that I ended up using the most when shaping the foam were the bi-metal Sawzall blade, the metal scraper spatula, and 80 grit sandpaper on a long sanding block. I continue to make the rest of the small panels that will later become my wheel wells, and I'm generally satisfied with the results. The biggest challenges with the pour foam are its extremely short working time, 
and that it exerts enough force when expanding to easily bend the plywood, resulting in a convex panel. So additional clamping and supports will be needed for bigger panels. Looking at the relevant specs for the pore foam versus the XPS foam that I had planned on using, the pore foam actually looks better. Considering the amount of expansion that I am getting, the pore foam will be a bit more expensive than the XPS foam, but since it doesn't require any additional adhesives, it may actually end up being a bit cheaper overall. The biggest advantage of the pore foam, of course, is that I can get it. So with that in mind, I've decided to move on with this construction technique. Join me next time as I tackle our camper floor. And in the meantime, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll do my best to answer any questions you have in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching.